what are we doing today? As you can see, we're making a VGC tier list. Keep in mind that um, we have exactly one tournament worth of results to base this off of. So I'm going to be basing it off of that. You know, um, I played at the Pure Regional Championships. Let me also open up Pokemon Showdown. Um, we're going to be ranking all of the new Pokemon in Regulation E. And keep in mind, we only have one tournament's worth of data for this one official tournament being uh, the Pure Regional Championships, which I did compete at and I used two new Pokemon. I used Sinistra and Blood Moon Ursaluna. I think I might have used one more, but we'll, we'll, if we come across it, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it. But yeah, um, there's a lot of new Pokemon in this DLC. We're, there's also some old Pokemon. Uh, this list, I didn't make it, but it has basically every relevant Pokemon on there. So we'll be ranking all the relevant ones. So there's some old ones as well, some new ones on there. Um, if you're watching the edited version of this on, you know, the YouTube video, Leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Brady, do something cool on screen right now. Uh, so starting off with Arbok. So Arbok is interesting in that it is a poison type, but it's also Arbok, and that is not good. It's kind of weird. Arbok has everything going for it. It's a poison type in a metagame where one of the best Pokemon is a fairy type, uh, and it also has Intimidate. What it doesn't have is stats. Well, it does have stats. It's it's Gen 1 stats, so it's garbage. Um, it does have some cool stuff it can do. It has access to, like, Glare, and it has access to, you know, Poison Jab. I think it gets Coil, which is, you know, cool. It doesn't get Swords Dance, though. So, I mean, it's a Pokemon, but it's going straight to D tier, in my opinion. For those of you who are not familiar with how I rank things, if you're, like, new to the channel, which a lot of you are, because we're almost at 100,000 subscribers, and last time I did a tier list, I think it was at like 60,000. The way that I rank Pokemon is S tier means they are meta-defining, they're the best of the bunch. A tier means they are very good, they are part of the metagame. B tier means it's sort of like an off-meta pick that um, still finds some usage. C tier means you're kind of cooking there, C is literally for cooking, and D is don't. Alolan Raichu is interesting. Um, the only issue with it is that its best partner is Tapu Koko, and Pink Urchin does exist, right? Uh, but by using Alolan Raichu without Tapu Koko, you're losing a lot of, you're losing like a lot of offensive pressure because you have two like super fast special attackers. Uh, Tapu Koko can even be physical, but um, Alolan Raichu does have access to like Fake Out, Stab Psychic, which is pretty nice with all the Terra Poison going around. Uh, you also have access to like really cool tools like Encore and it has a decent special attack stat with a really good speed stat. Uh, but you're weak to Flutterman and Flutterman's always going to be faster unless you pair it with Pincurchin, which you really don't want to. That's going to be a C tier. You can cope with it. It's not going to be great. We're going to get Sand Slash over with. It's a D tier. There are so many better ground types. I believe it has access to Sand Rush. And here's how you know it's bad because I would know if it has Sand Rush if it was good. Yeah, it does have Sand Rush, but you're working with 65 base speed. To outspeed Flutterman, you need to hit 103, and that's 148 speed, and you're only 100 attack. It's it's like not worth it, right? You get intimidated by Lando, you get walled by Lando. Does it get Ice Spinner? It doesn't. But you know what does? Alolan Sand Slash, which is going to be C tier. You can cook with this. You really can. Uh, the typing is better. Uh, it's going to be able to... It's basically the same stats, right? But it has a higher defense stat and a lower... Uh, no, does it have a lower special defense stat? No, it's just optimized. It's 45 special attack gets cut and added to the defense, but now you're a steel and ice type, which sucks, right? Um, but you can also run like Terra Water. That being said, you know how before it was like, okay, you're outspeeding Fluttermane, but you get walled by Lando? This guy's like the opposite. You're outspeeding Fluttermane, and you one-shot it and Lando. Uh, I would recommend if you do anything, you know, like Clear Amulet, Slush Rush, um, Icicle Crash, or maybe Icicle Spear. Uh, you could also do Ice Spinner if you really want, uh, but that's probably not the best. You want as much damage as possible. Uh, but the main issue with this guy is, why not just run Chen Pao? I guess because you can one-shot Chen Pao with Iron Head if it's not like Focus Sash. But even then, uh, 100 base attack isn't that good. Yes, with, you know, this speed investment, you can run Adamant and get a little bit more out of it. But you still need, like, Swords Dance. You still want, like, Icicle Crash and then, like, Protect. And in that now you're missing out on coverage, too. Defensively, like, Terra Water is fine. But, nah, it's it's a cooking Pokemon. Uh, Clefairy, that's going to be an automatic A tier for me. So Clefairy is really, 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 really good. Uh, and here's why. A lot of people don't know this. I have a whole video about it. Make sure you check out the uh, Pokemon who are better than their evolutions video if you haven't seen it. But Clefairy is much better than Clefable. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this out of the way. Clefable is cooking. Uh, Clefairy is good. So Clefairy is better than Clefable for a couple of reasons. It ends up being bulkier with the Eviolite, I think just slightly, um, because you do already have like 70 HP. It goes up to 95. The defense is 73. Special defense is 90. 48, 65. If you like do this, old nature, pretty good, right? It has access to 
a lot of really important tools. Protect, Icy Wind, uh, Follow Me, the usual, right? But the main thing that makes it useful is Friend Guard, which is going to lower the damage that your partner Pokemon take uh, to 75%, which is really big. Why would you not want to reduce the damage your partner Pokemon take by 75%? Very, very good. Uh, it pairs well with Pokemon that we see in the metagame a lot. Uh, like Kamo, it is like Kamo's best partner. Uh, it pairs well with like King Gambit. You have, you know, follow me. You have, you have like just redirection along with the ability for King Gambit to go for like swords dances. And it basically pairs well into like everything, you know, like you can put it on whatever team you want and it'll carry its weight. Ninetales is interesting. Um, and I've seen it do a couple of things. So Ninetales is a new sunsetter, which is cool enough on its own. But the only thing I've seen people cook with Ninetales on is sand uh sandy shocks nine tails and what they did is they used like timid um you know max speed max special attack you get a speed boost or not max special attack but like you know you get it you get it to the point where you get like a speed boost right and they used gravity because now you don't need the booster energy to activate this because you have protosynthesis you use gravity right and then the nine tails the nine tails clicked hypnosis and that is really scary <laughs> it's sort of like sandy shocks aspathra but now you don't need to waste like the booster energy and you don't have to use a spa throw. But yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. I, I don't know how good it's going to actually be, but I'll say like Ninetales is... I'm going to say cooking. I'm going to say Ninetales is cooking. Uh, now Alolan Ninetales. I'm going to put that in B tier. So I think Alolan Ninetales is actually really good right now, but it's not like A tier, right? So Alolan Ninetales is good because of a lot of changes that happened in Generation 9 uh, regarding Ice types. Ice types in Generation 8 through 1, 1 through 8, uh, they didn't get much out of hail. Basically, the benefit of hail was everything took damage except for ice types. Congratulations, everything on your team that isn't an ice type overcoat or has safety goggles is getting damaged by hail at the end of each turn. Very cool, awesome. Ba hail basically existed solely to activate other ice type abilities. Now in generation nine, we have snow, which is a lot better. You can run light clay, ni Alolan Ninetales, max speed, max, uh, max HP, four special attack, Tibbet nature. And with this, you now have the benefit of snow, right? You set up the snow and all ice types in the field have a passive 50% increase to their defense stat. So that nine tails isn't 180 HP, 95 defense. That's like what, 132 special or 132 defense. That's pretty good. That's like, that's like more physically bulky than it is in the special side. Um, on top of that, you also have Aurora Veil. So yeah, just that ability to set Aurora Veil, having the damage from both special and physical attacks instantly while also being a very bulky ice type that is fast and has access to support moves like Icy Wind, Encore, uh, and also 100% Accurate Blizzard, as well as just your fairy moves, you know, your Moonblast, etc. That's really cool. Like, th this is a very good Pokemon now, so that's why it's going to be in B tier. Um, Arcanine. I'm going to throw that in B tier for one reason. Uh, it is worse than Hisuian Arcanine. It doesn't have Rock Stab, which is really big on Hisuian Arcanine. What Arcanine does have is it is a hard wall to Ogre Pond. And that is it. You know, Ogre Pond Fire, one of the most annoying Pokemon in the format right now. Hisuian Arcanine, A tier. Automatically A tier. Uh, Hisuian Arcanine is basically, I don't know how good it's going to be once Terrestrialization is gone because it's kind of carried by the fact that it can, you know, get rid of its awful defensive typing whenever it wants. But offensively, Rock and Fire is really solid. You have access to Rock Slide coming off of a base 115 attack. You have access to Flare Blitz. You have access to extreme speed and you can run like protect or snarl whatever you want will-o-wisp is also a decent option it's a decent safety goggles pokemon but we've even seen like choice band i'm pretty sure choice band just won peoria right didn't james beck's team have like a choice band arcanine on it it's also an intimidate pokemon i didn't even mention that so yeah a tier victory bell i'm gonna throw that in i'm gonna say it's cooking just because it's a sun abuser we're gonna more or less like zoom through all like the pokemon that i think are forgettable um that like aren't gonna affect the metagame much uh i i feel like i spent too much time on sand slash because we have a lot of pokemon to cover so uh golem bad alolan golem probably cooking i think you get away with it it's kind of cool it's better than regular golem for sure um, it's the only Pokemon in the game with Galvanize, which I feel like I should cover that because it is literally like all of like the eight abilities are like no, lo no longer in existence, but this has one of them. So Galvanize turns all of your normal type moves electric type and you have 1.2 times power. It's sort of like Sylveon's Pixelite um, and it has explosion and that's very cool. Weezing, I'm going to throw that B tier and I'm going to throw, uh, you know, Galarian Weezing in B tier too, only for one reason. Um, I, I want to throw them in Cookin'. But I feel like the niche of turning off abilities right now is super underexplored. And I don't know who is going to make it work. But uh, being able to turn off Intimidates, being able to turn off like weather setting abilities, 
Being able to shut down Ogre Pond, not letting Ogre Pond do whatever it wants to do, is really big. And yeah, there's there's a lot of reasons to look into Weezing. I don't know if it's going to be a meta-defining Pokemon, but it's certainly an off-meta pick that it could be really good for you know, whatever team it's on. But yeah, uh, the fact that it doesn't turn off Protosynthesis is either a point in or against it, depending on how you're using it, right? Because I've seen people use like Booster Energy, what's it called, Roaring Moon with this thing, and you have like Tailwind, then you can go for Will-O-Wisp and stuff. Roaring Moon, you know, getting the Booster Energy Speed Boost is really big. Uh, despite the fact this turns off all abilities, it also makes Roaring Moon immune to Intimidate, which is really cool. So yeah, like that's the only reason it's going to be going in B tier. It does also turn off Commander, so you do shut down uh, Don Dozo. Gyarados, that is a B tier for me. Solid Intimidator, has access to like Thunder Wave, um, Taunt, etc. It's just going to be good. It sort of walls Ogre Pond. You take Neutral from Grass, uh, but you also resist Fire and you're an Intimidate Pokemon. Uh, you do well into Landorus as long as they're not going to go for a Rock Slide into you, which is, you know, fairly common, but yeah. Snorlax, I think, is going to be off meta. It's just going to be like Belly Drum. This format, though, Snorlax is more or less going to be using Thick Fat with like Terra Grass, I think. Um, just because Terra Grass makes it immune to Spore, makes it immune to Rage Powder. When you add on Thick Fat to it, uh, it loses the Fire Weakness, it, it loses the Ice Weakness. You're just left with Flying and Poison and Bug, which there's not a lot of like Bug or Poison types clicking attacking moves right now. So... You basically only have a flying weakness. That's really good into it. Articuno. Surprisingly B tier. Um, I lost Articuno a few times in this format already. It's still going to be doing the Bright Powder stuff. It's just a B tier pick. It's just a good Pokemon, you know. Galarian Articuno, you're cooking. Um, it has competitive. That's kind of cool with how much Intimidate's going around. But man, Galarian Articuno. Yeah, it has Trick Room. Yeah, it's decently fast. Yeah, it hits decently hard. But you're still like getting one shot by King Gambit. You're still getting one shot by Fluttermane. It's a rough spot for that Pokemon. I don't think it's that good. I'm going to say Zapdos is B tier. We can see where Zapdos's career goes. These aren't ranked within the tiers, by the way. Like, Alolan Ninetales is not the best B tier. They're just kind of all thrown in the tier that they belong in. Uh, yeah, Zapdos is a static Pokemon. I think it was better when Urshifu was more common. And yes, Urshifu did win the first regional. It was on both of the teams in top two. Um... But it wasn't, it isn't yet common. I'm sure it's going to pick up and Zapdos is going to get better. It might even move up to A tier because of static and stuff and Tailwind. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just throw it in B tier for now. I just don't see it doing as much as other Tailwind options that we have. Uh, Galarian Zapdos, that's a cooking Pokemon. I've lost to it as well. I've only played it once and I lost to it, but I don't have enough data to put it anywhere higher than cooking, unfortunately. Moltres, uh, that's a cooking. It's cooking. Uh, and that's just, once again, flame body, bulky, you yeah, have the option to tear a water. One cool thing that Moltres can do is it is a hard wall to Ogre Pond. Uh, you do have access to Tailwind, you have access to Recovery and like Roost and stuff. You times four resist the grass moves coming from it, which is also really good in Rillaboom, while also threatening a burn um, on Rillaboom. Uh, and you also have a resistance to fire moves, and Moltres is decently bulky. I've actually messed with it quite a bit. It's a good Pokemon. I don't think it's um, higher than Cooking though. I think you just barely get away with it. Uh, Galarian Moltres. I think that Galarian Moltres is about as good as it was in Reg D, but people aren't messing with it because of new Toy Syndrome. It's going to be a B tier for me. You can get away with it. It's got, you know, uh, Berserk. You can run a Citrus Berry. Uh, you can do whatever you need with it. It's probably still good, and we're just not seeing it that often. Dragonite, I still actually think is A tier. It's always going to be A tier. In a, in a format, where it can turn into a normal type and just spam Terra Normal Choice Band um, Extreme Speed. There's, it's never going to be lower than A tier. I'm, I'm just, I, that's just a fact. Typhlosion and other Typhlosion, they're cooking. Um, you can get away with them. They're not that good though. Burrit, that's going to be a D. Noctowl, that's a D. Ariados, that's a D. I don't even need to like justify these guys. They're just D tier. Azumarill, underexplored, but very good still. Uh, it is a fairy water type with access to huge power. Coming off of a coming off of a base 50 attack stat, you know, you run an adamant nature, max it out 112. That is now 224. That is a very high attack stat. You one shot basically anything if you choice band it, life orbit, do whatever. Uh, you also have access to the option of belly drum aqua jet. I don't think it's the best set right now, but um, it you know it's probably just better off running like an assault vest in my opinion, or even like a clear amulet. So despite being a regional champion in regulation C or B, I forget which one. I'm gonna say Jump Pluff is unfortunately not the best Tailwind setter anymore. We have Prankster Tailwind setters, speak of the devil. Uh, Murkrow, probably a C tier. Just run Tornadus if you're gonna run Murkrow. Yes, uh, Murkrow does have Haze. That's a, you know, genuine advantage as over Tornadus, but beyond that, it's not that good. Scizor, that's eh, cooking. Scizor, you could argue is B tier. 
Um, and man, that feels so weird. There's a lot of really good fire types going around right now. A lot of things want to Terra Fire as well. Terra Fire is one of the best defensive Terras in this format. And because of that, Scizor really, really struggles. It used to be better when other Terras were good. Stantler, that's going to be a D tier. Tyranitar, you're cooking with Tyranitar. I mean, it doesn't go positive into uh, Ogre Pond, I think, but you do have the option to set up Sand. You break some Sashes. You have Rock Slide. It's always going to be a decent Pokemon. It's never going to be It's never going to be bad, so I can't put it any lower than C. And also, Sand just doesn't have enough tools right now. I think if Excadrill existed, Sand would be a legit archetype you could run. Uh, like, Assault Vest Excadrill would just annihilate Fluttermane, dude. It, Fluttermane has no options into that. Mightyena, that's going to be a D tier. Ludicolo, uh, solid C tier. As far as Swift some abusers go, there are better options, but there are also worse options. It has access to Fake Out. It's a decent speed tier, but I think my main issue with it is that if you're going to run like 103 base speed and just barely outspeed the Fluttermane, you can go like modest and run like a life orb, I guess. I think you like need life orb. That's the only issue. I think it's just the fact that you have to run hydro pump. That's like the biggest disadvantage to it. Yeah, I think it, losing scald was really bad for it just because like Ludicolo's like got some bulk to it. That landing a scald burn was actually really important to how it played. Um, Shift Tree, despite the Wind Rider buff, Shift Tree would usually be D tier. It is now solidly C tier. Uh, yeah, it has Wind Rider now. Uh, it gets an attack boost every time it gets hit by a wind based move. It doesn't um, take any damage from those has access to Fake Out. It also has access to Tailwind itself. It can be its own Tailwind setter, but I usually see it paired with Tornadus despite that, just because Fake Out plus Tailwind is a very true combo, turn one. So not, not the best Pokemon, not the worst. Pelipper, that's gonna be a B tier for me. I actually think Pelipper and Politoed are kind of tied for best like rain setter. Let me let me grab Politoed. Where's Politoed? Uh, yeah, we'll talk about them both. Pelipper, Politoed, they both got like Helping Hand. Pelipper has access to Tailwind though. Politoed's main advantage over Pelipper is access to like Parish Song, where Pelipper's main advantage over Politoed is access to Stab Hurricane that cannot miss. Pelipper enables a lot of different teams to do really well. We still see stuff like Urshit for Rapid Strike, Pelipper, and Golden Go running around. Those three are like an iconic trio at this point. Semper ran them on that um, Worlds team, and they're still very good. So Pelipper, solid Pokemon. Slacking. Uh, yeah, it's D tier. It even with wheezing, right? Even with wheezing turning off Slacking's Truant, I just don't see it like doing anything. All right, so the thing with with like the wheezing plus like Regigiga stuff in VGC 2022 was that it had access to Dynamax and you could just life orb, run Giga Impact, one shot everything with max strike off of base 150 or 160 base power, right? Slacking can't do that. Um, you have to run Mega Kick to one-shot things, and you're not gonna land it, so it's just it's just not worth it. Sableye, I'm gonna put it in B tier. It's it's a good Pokemon. Uh, fake Out, Quash, Foul Play, Will O Wisp, Screens. It gets everything it needs. It's like a it's sort of like Grimmsnarl, but um, it has just slightly different tools. Quash is like a decent enough tool in a lot of um, meta games. Like if you're facing Trick Room and it doesn't have like Indeedee on it, you can Quash the Pokemon under Trick Room and then like Choice Ban friggin. Urshifu doesn't care. That's pretty cool. As as much as I want to say, yeah, these Pokemon are good, I'm going to say no. Um, Volbeat, it has the exact same stats as Ilumise. Volbeat, Ilumise, right? Exact same stats, but its attack and special attack are swapped, which means that your best offensive move is U-turn, where Ilumise can run Struggle Bug pretty well. So yeah, so if Volbeat is D, Ilumise is C. Their main niche is, you know, you can run a set like Struggle Bug. Charm is pretty cool. Helping Hand is pretty decent. It also gets fake tears. Actually, does Volby get fake tears? Yeah. Uh, Illumise is just outright better, but they're both prankster bug types. Uh, you know, you can get a lot more value out of like a Thunderous most of the time. Uh, Torkoal, B tier. Uh, it's not as strong as it was in Reg B. Reg E is a little bit less friendly for it. Uh, there's, It's got competition in Ninetales, but Torkoal is just outright better still. Uh, we have seen like Trick Room Torkoal teams do super well. You, you still have access to Charcoal, Terrifier, Eruption. You still one shot whatever underneath Trick Room. It's it's Torkoal. What else can we say? Whizcash, straight to D. Crawdon, C. You can do a lot of damage with it with Adaptability Knockoff, Adaptability Liquidation. But beyond that, eh. Milotic, straight to B. So Milotic is interesting, and I do want to cover this because some people really overestimate how good Milotic would be. It is one of the few Pokemon in the metagame with access to Scald, which is something that we can't really understate. But its main role is going to be the Coil, Scald, um, Hypnosis set with like Protect as the final move. It does get Icy Wind, it does get Haze, but this is like the bread and butter set. Personally, I thought it was better when it had access to Muddy Water because 
it made it so you could no longer miss Muddy Water. And the Muddy Water mirrors were kind of good for Milotic because you ever got that accuracy drop on your Milotic. Competitive made it so you could just get plus two. And yeah, uh, with how good Intimidate is right now because of the existence of Ogre Pawn, Milotic is actually a really solid option. It's one of the best Terra Dragon users because defensively you want Ogre Pawn at that point. The main downside is if you don't Terra, uh, you drop two Ogre Pawn <laughs> and Rillaboom. So solid B tier pick in my opinion. Dusclops. Dusclops is a solid B tier for me. Dusclops is cool because Dusclops does not die. It is one of the best EV Light users in the game. It has access to a ton of really cool uh, moves like Trick Room, Will-O-Wisp, Haze. Uh, Pain Split is very cool. So you might have noticed this guy named Brian Hands. Brian Hands is one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the game. Huge HP stat, right? Dusclops, 40 HP stat, puny HP stat, right? So let's say that you're facing like a, let's go with like a 156 HP Iron Hands. Let's make it a clean 250 just to make the math a little bit easier. Uh, it hits 147. So let's round it so they both hit a clean 50. So like, let's say that it's like 150 plus 250. That sends you to what? That is uh, four, that's 400 HP total. Divided by two, Dusclops scales that uh, back to full because that's above the 147. Iron Hands, meanwhile, Neo, it loses a clean 50 HP immediately. Yeah, um, and the lower Dusclops' HP gets, the more it takes from Iron Hands and recovers everything off. That is huge. Brian is a very generous man. Uh, its main way of dealing damage, though, is Nightshade. Flat 50 HP each turn. It gets three shot by opposing Dusclops. Very cool. Chimeco, E, Torterra. C, it gets Shell Smash. If I didn't mention that, people would be really, really mad at me. They'd say... Torterra's B tier, bro. Torterra's B tier. I don't know why I'm doing a Hank Hill. Bobby, Torterra's B tier. I don't know why. Moxie boosted, threw it in the in the C tier. He said he was cooking. Infernape. It, it gets that cool new fire outrage moves, but it's it's still Infernape. You're just cooking with it. Empoleon. I regret to inform you, competitive is not the buff we thought it was. You are still just cooking. We have Milotic. This is Milotic at home. Straptor. Out of, I want to put it in B tier out of respect because it got what top eight or top sixteen or something at uh, pure regionals, but it's still a cooking mod in my opinion. Uh, let's let's look at it. The reason Staraptor, in my opinion, is still cooking because it is very much a gimmick mod. Uh, its best set is the Choice Scarf set. You max out that HP, you max out that speed, you have a little bit of attack. You run Brave Bird, you run U-turn, you run final gambit and like a fourth move that's not coming to mind at the moment and you use that as like a lead to just ko a pokemon right away and then you get up your trick room and it, it does its thing you know uh luxray has intimidate not cooking i'm gonna go ahead and throw gastrodon in v tier gastrodon despite the fact that we now have ogre pond is still a really good terrifier pokemon when it terrifies, it becomes one of the most annoying Pokemon to KO in the game because Storm Drain, its ability makes it so it's immune to water moves. It heals off a of water move, or no, it uh, gets a special attack boost off of water moves, meaning it's ice beams, it's earth powers, it's freaking muddy waters. They all hit a lot harder, right? Um, Yawn is very annoying. It's like super bulky. It's always going to be good. It also is one of the few clear smog Pokemon in the game. So, uh, Ambipom, nope. Bronzong, uh, what, did I just throw it in D? No, it is fine. It's a B tier. Uh, decent Trick Room Setter, Gyro Ball, Hypnosis, the works. It's not much to go into there. Yon Mega, I'm going to say D. You're a bug flying type. Yes, you're decently bulky. Yes, you're decently fast. Yes, you hit kind of hard, but... Rock Slide. Sorry. Um, Gliscor, C tier. Your competition's Landorus, and as far as stall goes, I played stall for an entire season of EGC. Gliscor is not a Pokemon I thought I needed, and I still don't think I need it. And yes, uh... Toxic Orb Poison Heal is like a really cool combo that can keep Gliscor alive for a super long time, but you're still weak to ice moves, and regardless of what you tear it into, your special defense isn't all that, right? 75, 75, like Fluttermane can one-shot you. Uh, then again, being one-shot by Fluttermane isn't like the measuring stick we should use to determine a good Pokemon, because everything gets one-shot by Fluttermane. That's a hyperbole, but you get what I mean. Like, there's, there's a lot of Pokemon that, like, if they're going to be viable... Like, if, if you can find a niche for them, at the very least, they should survive a Fluttermane Moonblast, you know? Uh, Mamoswine. I'm gonna say C tier. It is an oblivious Pokemon. You can Choice Band it. You can hit really, 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 really hard with, um, you know, Choice Band Ice Shard. That's basically all it can do. <laughs> Icicle Crash. Does it get Headlong Rush? No, you know what? We can talk when it gets Headlong Rush. For now, you're still clicking um, High Horsepower. And yeah, its special defense isn't that good either. I guess you could Assault Vest it. Uh, and you can use this as like a check to Lando. Pro Pass. D. Dusk Noir. D. There's no reason to use it over Dusclops. Dusclops is just 
explicitly better. Like there's no reason. <laughs> there's no reason to. Uh, Rotom Heat. I'm going to go ahead and throw every single Rotom in seeds here. Every Rotom is just okay. The Lake Trio. This guy can like Trick Room and Imprison and stuff. This guy can like Trick Room and Imprison and stuff. This guy uses Explosion. It's probably easier to get away with Azelf than any of these guys, so I'll keep it in C tier. Heatran. That is a B tier for me. Possible A tier? I don't know. I didn't see a lot of Heatran this weekend just because that Fire type slot's basically taken up. Uh, but Heatran's still a really, really good Pokemon. Uh, it's able to be like a Flash Fire Terra Grassmon, meaning that it almost walls out Ogre Pond because Mold Breaker exists. <laughs> if you can get them to go for that Terra and activate uh, Embody Aspect over Mold Breaker, then yes, you do wall it. Eh, we'll throw it in A tier. I haven't seen it in a lot. I think it's very underrated though. I think a lot of people are scared of Ogre Pond and they don't want to click it. So Cresselia, that is going to be an S tier for me. I think Cresselia is super good. It is stupid good, and Cresselia will never not be S tier in a terrestrialization format because it's very hard to KO. Why is Cresselia so good? Well, let me explain to you, child. 120 HP, 110 defense, 120 special defense. Lives everything, right? Its best item, safety goggles. Where is it going? Gas station sushi. No, uh, as ice beam, psychic are both like really decent moves on it for coverage. Like nothing switches in on it. Not that you're dealing damage, but more that you hit everything for decent damage. Uh, it has access to really important moves like trick room and helping hand, but it's most important tool that it has that like you just can't find anything else in the game that does what it does is obviously Lunar Blessing, not Lunar Dance. Jody as a rally, that team shoot error was hilarious. Uh, Lunar Blessing. It heals Cresselia and its allies by one fourth of their HP and cure status. At Pittsburgh, not Pittsburgh, at uh, Peoria Regionals, I ran in Iron Hands faster than my Cresselia, specifically because under Trick Room, my Safety Goggles Cresselia would always be able to wake up my Iron Hands and allow it to hit Amoongus. So like, let's say under Trick Room, it's like, oh no, my my Iron Hands, which is not Terra Grass, it was Terra Fire, got spored. What am I going to do? Cresselia moves next, wakes it up, heals it up a little bit, heavy slam into the Amoongus, Mushroom gets squished. Does a lot of things for a lot of teams too. It has access to Icy Wind. Uh, it is just the all around best support Pokemon in the format. And I, I, it is our first S tier. And Kelder, you're cooking. Leave Annie. B tier. Uh, Sunroom still exists. I don't want to put it in B tier. So I'm going to throw them both in C tier. I think you're cooking at the moment with Sunroom. Uh, if you don't know what the Lilligans do, they just click after you next to Torkoal to allow for Torkoal to go for um, after you eruption with like Terra Fire. They also have access to Sleep Powder, which is really cool. But beyond that, like there's not, there's not too much going for them. They are decently threatening attackers, though, I guess. Asura and Zorak, certainly cooking. Gothitelle. I think Gothitelle's criminally underrated right now, actually. It still has Fake Out. You're still able to trap things. You're scared of Fluttermane, obviously. Terra's an option, though, and it never really stopped it from being good in Regulation D. Or Regulation uh, B, I mean. Uh, so I think it's uh, an option that can be explored. It's certainly not C tier. It's just barely, barely, barely B tier. Swana, B tier. Amoongus, A tier. I don't think it's S anymore, just because there's a lot of options for beating it. Um, and the grass type slot is mostly taken up by various ogre ponds. Funny enough, ogre pond being a grass type with follow me over rage powder means that it almost just invalidates a lot of Amoongus, but Amoongus is still very good in most matchups. Uh, being able to follow me away spore and then just not go to sleep is really funny. <laughs> Electros, that is a D tier. Sorry, it doesn't matter if you don't. Did you know that if you terastalize Electros into an electric type, it doesn't have any weaknesses? Crazy, crazy. Who would have thought? C tier for Chandelure. Trick Room, Imprison, Heat Wave, Flash Fire, the usual. Same with Mian Xiao, same with Mandibuzz. These are just Pokemon that it's easy to get away with using, in my opinion. I'm gonna say B tier for Volcarona, just barely. Um, Volcarona will always be decent. Has access to Flame Body, 100 base speed, Quiver Dance, Rage Powder, Heat Wave. You can Terra into like whatever Terra you need to to not drop. Terra Dragon's pretty decent. Uh, that'll allow you to take on Ogre Pond as well. Uh, Tornadus, I'm gonna say S tier. The best speed control in the game right now. Hands down. Pont, Icy Wind, whatever, you know. B tier for Thunderous. Not A tier. Usually I would put it in A tier. Um, but it seems like Thunderous got like the short end of the stick this format. Rain isn't nearly as good, so Wild Bolt Storms aren't landing that much. Uh, you do have Thunder Wave, you do have Eerie Impulse, but it's a physical format. Eerie Impulse doesn't get you nearly as far. Thunderous Therian, uh, you're cooking. Same with Landorus Incarnate. And I'm going to say Landorus S tier. Easy S tier. Oh my god. Scarf Lando is like the only Lando right now, which is really funny. I, you would think that there are more sets you could get away with right now, but Scarf Lando being able to U-turn and threaten Ogre Pond and threaten a KO on basically anything with like Stomping Tantrum, Terra Blast, or whatever, uh, it makes it really difficult to deal with. And 
Uh, it is just like the best Intimidator in the format right now and the reason that King Gambit stocks are kind of on the rise. Chestnut, you're cooking. Talonflame, cooking. It would usually be like B tier, but like I said, we have better Tailwind options. And this is like an offensive uh, Tailwinder though. I've seen Sharpbeak Terra Flying and like Life Life Orb Terra Flying where they just like click Ray Bird into something and annihilate like Fluttermanes. That's the one niche it has. You can just blow up a Fluttermane, but beyond that, not really. Uh, Sylveon, solid B tier option. Not able to take in Ogre Pond plus one Terrifier, Terrifier uh, Ivy Cudgel, but not many things can. Uh, decent Pokemon with access to Hyper Voice. You can choice specs it, you can do whatever. We've seen it work. I think you're cooking with Gudra this format. Charger Bug, surprisingly not D tier. I think you can cook with it. Vikavolt, same. Rubombi, eh, probably D tier. These Pokemon that we're going through right now are like not notable, but also like not bad. You know what I mean? Greninja and D. Yeah, so someone's going to ask me to explain that. Why is Greninja in D? Greninja is in D because 122 base speed is fine and all, but you're still not outspeeding Fluttermane, getting one shot by it. Yes, you have access to tools like Gunk Shot and Protean, but um, with Protean being nerfed to only activate once per game, uh, it is not, or not once per game, once per like time you switch in, uh, it's not nearly as reliable. Yes, you can do like Shadow Sneak stuff, but even stab Shadow Sneak coming off a 95 base attack, you can live that. Like, Fluttermane can live that. It's absurd how bulky that Pokemon gets when you invest. Why is Charger Bug higher than it? Because Charger Bug is funny. Charger Bug can run Eviolite. It actually has decent defenses. It becomes very annoying to KO. Uh, Battery. This Pokemon's allies have their special attacks multiplied by 1.3 times. It also has access to the likes of... I think it lost Electroweb. Oh my god, does it get Struggle Bug? Okay, it's still a Struggle Bug. I guess you have Light Screen. Eh, nah, no, he's gonna go in D tier. Sorry. Uh, Orangaroo, you're cooking. Mimikyu, I'm going to say B tier. You can trick room with that guy. He does whatever he needs. Kamo, solid. I'm going to go B tier. I don't want to put it A tier. Yes, Kamo is like good with Clefairy and stuff. You have like Intimidate Landorus next to it. Uh, Sinus Shock and like keep it healthy. And you can even do like the classic Kamo setup, right? Well, not classic because it was bad in Generation 8 and it didn't have it in Generation 7. Um, but it has this move called Clangorous Soul. It also has an item called Rut Spray. It also has an ability called Bulletproof. So what you do is you run Terra Steel, Flash Cannon, Clanger Soul, Protect, and Clanging Scales. And what happens is you click Clanger Soul, use up a little bit of your health, 33% of your health, you get an Omni Boost, right? Now you outspeed Fluttermane. Throat Spray activates because that's a sound based move. Now you outspeed Fluttermane and you one shot everything. And now you spam Flash Cannon with Terra Steel or Clanging Scales and just hit everything for decent damage. Beyond that, Bulletproof is the best ability for this guy because when you Terra Steel, you're resisting Fluttermane's uh, Moonblast now, so they don't want to click that into you. And Bulletproof makes it so you're immune to ball moves or bullet moves. This includes Shadow Ball, meaning you wall Fluttermane. You just, you wall it. You, it doesn't beat you. That's insane. Freaking Kamoa fighting Dragon-type beats Fluttermane. Hilarious. Good Pokemon. Uh, Rillaboom. Uh, easy A tier. I don't think it's S tier. It's just, it's Rillaboom. Fake out Grassy Glide. Even though Grassy Glide got nerfed to 50, I base power. They're running Miracle Seed now. They've adapted. You're going to be D tier. Sorry, buddy. Grim Snarl. Easy B tier. Screens will never be that bad. Indeedy male is cooking. Indeedy female is A tier. Um, Psy, uh, not Psy Spam, but like Trick Room in general. Really likes Indeedy female. It makes it hard to deny the Trick Room. You have Follow Me. You have access to, um... Psychic Train as well, making it difficult for things to go for Fake Out to stop you. Uh, Prankster Taunt is no longer an option, so consider that. And yeah, it is a very bulky Pokemon with a lot of options. It is solidly A tier. More Pico, D e tier. Dragapult, C tier. Uh, it is no longer, it is no longer Regulation C. Uh, Dragapult is, eh, let me think. What's really stopping Dragapult? Nothing really, I'll throw him B tier. Uh, Urshifu, which one is this? Pretend Urshifu Dark is here and Urshifu water is here. It's it's Urshifu water. It ignores protect. It hits you with surging strikes. A lot of people really undervalued it because of the existence of Grassy Glide, but you have options to beat it. And it's not like Grassy Glide hits that hard, you know? Regieleki, uh, you're cooking, unfortunately. Regidrago, that is a solid B tier. We live in the timeline where Regidrago is better than Regieleki. This is the best timeline. Uh, Regidrago, it clicks Dragon Energy. It pairs really well with Golden Go as well. Uh, having a steel type that just outright beats Fluttermane is really cool. Uh, and just having access to, like, Tailwind with this dude, Tornadus, uh, makes it really difficult for a lot of teams to check. So, solid B tier, in my opinion. Glacier, that's eh, a C tier. You're cooking. It's just a Trick Room attacker, be a better options. Same with... Yeah, I think it's a lot harder to get away with this guy nowadays, just because, like, you could do it in Regulation... 
it feels like you just get, kind of get messed up. You know, there's, there's better options. Ursaluna, solid B tier Pokemon. You really only see it on Trick Room teams. Um, now that Ogre Pond and Rillaboom have access to Grassy Glide, it makes it harder for this guy to operate. Uh, but it's still a very, very good option. Almost, almost A tier in my opinion. Almost A tier. Uh, we're going to throw it right next to it. I think that they function basically the same. Uh, it's just like a decent Trick Room option. Basket Legion. B tier. I mean, Rain's never going to be that bad. Basket Legion female, unfortunately. Physical attacking version's better. So Basket Legion female, the special attacking version, uh, it's going to go into C tier. Sneasler, uh, you can cook with it. I don't think it's like a metagame pick. It feels like it's just a cheese Pokemon. I, I want to throw it in cooking. Anamorous, uh, you're cooking with that guy. Anamorous Therian, though, I've seen it work under Trick Room. It's actually very scary. So I'm going to throw it in B tier. Meowskarata. Uh, you can do some stuff with it. That's a cooking tier. Um, uh, still cooking. Uh, yes, it has Revival Blessing, and that's like a really decent option uh, for like Don Dozo teams. We, we've seen like Revival Blessing Palmot work in later formats, but it, it seems to have peaked, right? It, the best version of it was in Regulation A, but now that we have like just faster Pokemon, now that Flutterman exists and it can one-shot it and outspeed it, it's not that good. Uh, Mouse Hold, Mouse Ape's still going to be a thing, so I'm going to, it's never going to be lower than B in my opinion. We have better friend guard Pokemon though, like Clefairy is basically taking over Mousehold's job. But if you need a friend guard Pokemon for like Annihilate, then yeah, it's it's still gonna be B tier. Garganical, I think you're cooking this format. It's very hard to play stall. Garganical is really, really only good on stall. So Armor Rouge, as much as I hate to say it, it's A tier. I hate you, you stupid. Yeah, Armor Rouge is annoying. And it's the only Pokemon in the game with access to Expanding Force. Also has access to Flash Fire combo with Terra Grass, meaning that you can't hit it super effective with fire moves. Um and you also now don't get killed by like water moves and stuff. It's its own trick room setter as well. Armor cannon hits like a truck. It is what it is. Sarah Ledge is cooking though. There, It is not regulation B. You are cooking with this guy. Palafin, I've gotten cooked by this guy. It's it's still B tier. Palafin's never gonna be that bad. It's just the existence of Urshifu Rapid Strike makes it difficult to choose Palafin over that. But Palafin still has the benefit of Haze, meaning it does better into Don Dozo. Uh, and Jet Punch still hits like a truck, so it's never going to be that low. Fourth Worm is cooking. Lamora, still decent. Still decent. And this might be the stall player in me, like coping. But uh, Toxic Spikes, probably better than they were in Regulation E, just because there's less Cresselia than usual. Um, I'm sure that'll change soon, though. I'm sure Cresselia will pick back up. But uh, having Mortal Spin as well as Toxic Debris means that into unprepared teams and into Dondozo matchups, uh, you can basically win turn one. Flamigo, you can only cook with him. You can't get any better than that. Same with you, Dondozo. I'm going to throw Dondozo and Tatsugiri in A tier. Why is Dondozo still A tier? Dondozo is what I like to call a win condition Pokemon, where what you do is you go, how do they beat Dondozo? Cool, I'm going to KO it, and then you do, and then Dondozo wins. Yeah, uh, there is a meme about 222 Dondozo. For those of you who are unaware, 222 Dondozo is the team that you bring when you want to make sure you get points. So that is Dondozo, Tatsugiri. That is the two. And then Fluttermane, Chi Yu. That is the other two. And then Shen Pao. And a physical attacker. Sometimes Dragonite. Sometimes Urshifu. That is the other two. So two, 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 Dondozo. You have hyper offense. You get rid of the check to Dondozo. You get rid of the haze user. You get rid of like the Amoongus. You get rid of the clear smog. Then Dondozo comes in, cleans up with Earthquake. That is how it works. It is one of the best Pokemon ever. Annihilate, solid B tier. I mean, Mouse Ape still works. Might as well throw them together. Rigoraf, B tier. Not A tier. Uh, it is very good on Trick Room. It is really, really annoying on Hyper Offense too. Um, Reggie Drago loves Farigraph, uh, because you can just imprison Trick Room and then Tailwind Reggie Drago goes in Sano mode. King Gambit, that is an A tier. Oh my God, we found out this weekend it was an A tier. King Gambit is good because Ogre Pond is good. Yes, it loses to Ogre Pond, but Ogre Pond's biggest weakness is Intimidate. King Gambit loves Intimidate. Lat Glasses, Swords Dance, Terra Dark King Gambit is the standard right now, and it is, it, it challenges the limits of what is considered a resisted move. I dare you. I dare you to try to switch in an Iron Hands on plus two Terra Dark Black Glasses Kowtow Cleave. It takes like 70%, dude. It is ridiculous how much you do. It is ridiculous. So, um, King Gambit is back. Make sure you felt the apology form before you leave. Great Tusk. It's never going to be that bad. I would argue it could even be cooking. <sighs> Screamtail, unfortunately, is cooking now. It's the existence of like Taunt and um, Tailwind Prankster Mons that really shut down Screamtail from performing. I don't know if it's ever going to be as good as it was before Tornadus, but it's certainly not there now. You can get away with Brubonnet. It's Brubonnet. Fluttermane, that is an S tier. Fluttermane will never not be S tier. All hail our Fluttermane Overlord. You know why it's good. I don't have to get into it. Slitherwing. Yeah, you can cook. Same with Sandy Shocks. Same with Iron Treads. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and put um, Ironic Bird 
in uh, A tier. There are a lot of Pokemon in this format that do not want to get Icy Winded. There are a lot of Pokemon in this format that do not want to get Encored. Ironic Bird, Iron Bundle, has access to all these tools. Icy Wind, Encore, um, Hydro Pump, Protect. This is one of the most annoying sets you can run. You can also drop Encore for a Freeze Dry. Now, what are you hitting? You're hitting a lot of top tiers. You're hitting Dondozo for super effective damage. You're hitting Rillaboom for super effective. Amoongus, Heatran, uh, everything. Ice and Water are really good offensive typings, and being able to outspeed Scarf Landorus, slow it down, and then KO it with another Pokemon is just really good. Uh, and yeah, locking things into Swords Dance as well. There's a lot of setup this format. The better setup is, the better Encore is, which is why, you know, Ironic Bird is A tier. Iron Hands, S tier. Brian Hands is my idol. I love Brian Hands. I will marry Brian Hands one day. Um, why is Iron Hands the best Pokemon in the game? Iron Hands does not die. That is its special ability. Yeah, I know it says Quark Drive, but its real ability is it doesn't die. Um, its other ability is it one-shots whatever you need it to. I personally am in the camp that uh, Terra Fire and Assault Vest is the only set you should ever be running. As a matter of fact, this is the only set you need for the rest of your life. Dream Punch, Heavy Slam, Fake Out, Wild Charge. It does everything you need to do. It washes the dishes. It takes the kids to school. It's, it's Brian Hands. If you if you put Iron Hands on your team right now, you can take it to whatever matchup you want and it's just going to show up. It's going to be like, oh, hey, what is this team I've never seen before? I don't know. I'll bring Iron Hands and then you win. That's just how it works. I love this Pokemon. Iron Jugulus, you can cook. Iron Moth, you can cook. Cook. B tier, Baxcalibur is in a really good place right now. Um, He's been seeing his therapist and he's, you know, trying to reach self-actualization. So Baxcalibur has access to two abilities, Thermal Exchange and Ice Body. Both are fine. Ice Body has been picking up though. And people run the set of Loaded Dice with enough speed where you like outspeed like stuff at plus one. I don't know what you want to outspeed right now. Uh, but you run Swords Dance, Icicle Spear, Scale Shot, and Protect. I know what you're thinking. Oh, you know, it's pretty bulky. 115 HP, 92, 86. Well, with the snow up, you get even bulkier. It's best friend Ninetales exists now. And Ninetales has access to more speed control and more damage control. Not beam. Fail. Calm down. Uh, yeah, so that's big. Because you're an ice type in the snow, you get a defense boost passively. You become almost unkillable on the physical side. Uh, that's going to make it easy to go for the swords dance, especially behind screens. And then you heal with ice body. You go for like Terra Fire or whatever. And Scale Shot, its new move in the DLC, will hit always four or five times due to loaded dice one shot whatever you really need to hit it with it plus two and then you get plus one speed and then it becomes the most annoying pokemon to deal with vex caliber is probably you know as good as it will ever be so solid solid b tier golden go as well i'm gonna throw golden go i'm gonna throw an a it feels weird putting in b golden go is always undervalued but never underrepresented it won the most recent regional championship and yeah uh cooking for wo chen i love you baby sorry you'll be good you'll be good one day chen pao uh, I think it's S tier. Chen Pao is very, very good in this format. It hits very hard. Uh, it is 135 base speed. It speed ties with opposing Fluttermane. The difference between you and Fluttermane, though, is that you're always going to be jolly, and they're sometimes not going to be. They're sometimes not going to be timid. Ice School Crash is very good. You could also run Ice Spinner if you really want um, to deal with Psy Spam better. You have access to Sucker Punch, Throat Chop, Crunch, Sacred Sword, whatever. And you're almost always going to be Terra Ghost. But yeah. Uh, the main deal with this guy, though, is its ability Sword of Ruin. Sword of Ruin makes it so every Pokemon's defense stat is multiplied by 0.75, so you're hitting 25% harder. It's a very difficult Pokemon to deal with, especially when it's paired up with the likes of, you know, Arcanine, Iron Hands, Urshifu, Dragonite. It enables a lot of things, and it's a very scary Pokemon. One of the best. Um, I think that Ting Lu is actually in a decent spot right now underappreciated because Landorus exists, uh, but you're never not going to get value out of it, in my opinion. It's still the Fissure monster. It's still the Tickle monster, you know? Uh, it does what it needs to do, and it does it well. Chi Yu, A tier. Feels weird not putting it S. I don't think Chi Yu is actually that good. Uh, we have better fire types right now. We have Heatran uh, that could sometimes wall Chi Yu if it's not choice specs, um, but it feels like Chi Yu is a Pokemon that needs to be babysat, you know? You need Tailwind, you need Fake Out, you need to make sure that the pH in its water is like always like 7.3 because it's tropical fish. Um, otherwise, it just dies. So yeah, no, uh, it is a decent Pokemon. It hits super, super hard. It is very scary to deal with. Uh, and it feels like it, I don't know, it, just, it needs to be babysat, but it is good. It is good. It's just not S tier anymore. Roaring Moon, A tier. I think Roaring Moon uh, is defeated the mid allegations. Why? It now has access to a very important move called Knockoff. Knockoff is 65 base power, becomes what? 
1.5 that's like uh, 98 we'll call it 98 um i'm making that number up but yeah knockoff with booster energy speed is very annoying because let's say you're facing off against an opposing scarf landorus and you have like a nine tails next to it let's say you do like nine tails roaring moon lead now your roaring moon outspeeds the landorus landorus probably thinks ah you know i can just go for a u-turn here i'll be fine i don't need to hard switch out on nine tails bam knockoff he loses his scarf his wallet his keys his money and then it gets hit by blizzard and then he dies uh, yeah, that's very important. Knockoff also is just really reliable damage. Typically, you're already running like Terra Flying with um, Acrobatics anyways for like the other damage. But uh, being able to have a decent dark move that isn't Lockjaw or Jaw Lock or Crunch, uh, that's pretty cool. Iron Valiant, Iron Mid. Diplin is literally so bad. You can cook with it, but it's... Oh my god. I, I'm putting it in D. It's like actually that bad. I tried to use it. It wasn't good. Sinistra, that is an A tier for me. Oh my god. Sinistra is so cool. I ran this at Peoria, right? I ran this at Peoria Regionals. Sinistra is a Pokemon that can run a variety of Terra types. I personally am partial to Terra Fire right now with like Citrus Berry. Um, but what it can do is it's a Trick Room Setter. Uh, it is a Rage Powder user. It has access to Matcha Gacha, a spread grass type move that is 80 base power, 90 accuracy and 20% chance to burn while also healing and thawing you. It also does the dishes. Um, and you also have Strength Set. One of the most important moves to run on this guy if you run Strength Set, this thing is Brian Hands' biggest nightmare. What does Brian Hands do to a Terra Fire Sinistra? It doesn't wild charge it because guess what? That's like a three hit KO. And then it gets Machu Gacha to get burned. You know, you get Strength Sapped. It, 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 does, it doesn't KO. You get hard walled by this guy and it's hilarious. Yeah, um, it just enables so many different things. And Hospitality, I haven't even talked about that yet. Hospitality on switch and restores a quarter of your opponent's or your ally's maximum HP rounded down. That means that like with Pokemon like blood moon ursa luna or pokemon like cresselia pokemon like iron hands it just makes it like they stay in the field way longer than you really really think that they would so yeah phenomenal pokemon okie dogie actually in a decent place it is a solid b tier uh it has access to guard dog bulk up drain punch poison jab it functions like how annihilate would function and i got this comment in a video a little while back saying why would you run um okie dogie when you can just run uh annihilate and, 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 and annihilate's just better and to that person i say Annihilate has to Terra when it sees a Fluttermane. Okie dokie doesn't care. It, it doesn't care. When it sees a Fluttermane, it goes, I'm just going to take neutral from everything. And then you bulk up and then you poison jab and then they die. Uh, yeah, good Pokemon. Monkey Dory, D tier. We're not going to talk about it. Pheasantipity, C tier. Icy Wind can poison things. Aylwind. Dazzling Pretty cool. And now we rank the Ogre Ponds. Ogre Pond Rock, B tier for me. You have Defense Boost. You have Sturdy. Uh, that's pretty cool. You know, you have the most accurate rock move in the game that deals a lot of damage. Most reliable rock move. That's big. Um, Ogre Pond Fire. Easy S tier. Oh my god. The meta defining Pokemon in the format. You know, it has access to Swords Dance. And it can be paired with a Rillaboom. You go for like Fake Out. You Swords Dance. You Embody Aspect. After you Terrestrialize. You become a pure Fire type. And then you click friggin' Grassy Glide. And KO everything. It's stupid. Great Pokemon. Very, very difficult to switch in on. So, yeah. Um... Ogre Pond Grass, that's going to be B tier. It's just, you know, it's also an Ogre Pond. It has Defiant. It doesn't get the mask boost that the other guys get because um, it doesn't have an item. But it, it can hold an item. You can put like a Life Orb on it. Typically, you see like Sash or Life Orb. They're just like Swords Dance, Wood Hammer, Grassy Glide, Knock Off, that sort of thing. Uh, Ogre Pond Wellspring, another easy S tier. Ogre Pond Wellspring is the one that gets a special defense boost and has uh, Water Absorb as its uh, ability before it terrestrializes. It is bulky and difficult to KO once it terrestrializes. It has access to Follow Me, which it will always run, meaning that it walls Amoongus and it like shuts it down on opponent's teams. Ivy Cudgel, when you Terra, does so much damage, even though it's not, you know, even though it's not like an attacker, it, it can like be an attacker. And it's really difficult to deal with. Uh, Water Grass is a phenomenal typing offensively, uh, and just defensively, it's not that bad either. You don't care about Iron Hands' as Wild Charge as much as you would think you would as a Water type, but you don't know that Grass type kind of buffers it. Uh, at any point, you can start w not walling Fluttermane, but you can like reactively tear a Water, get that special defense boost, and then Ivy Cudgel and one shot the Fluttermane. That's big. It is it, a, it is a very important Pokemon, and it's I believe it won Peoria as well. I'm pretty sure it was paired with Golden Go and like freaking follow me and set up and stuff. But yeah, uh, so that's gonna be our tier list for tonight objectively right yes download image and just like that i've saved my tier list and now it is the law so yeah those are my thoughts thanks for watching if you're watching the youtube video i appreciate it make sure you leave a like subscribe if you're not a patreon or a channel member 
You can do that. It supports me a ton. Get access to bonus videos. As a matter of fact, someone in the chat become a channel member right now so I can show it off to everyone else. I'm definitely not begging. But yeah, uh, these are all the Pokemon that were on the tier list. If there's a Pokemon that you're thinking of that I didn't put on the tier list, it's because it wasn't on the template. Probably because it's not that good. It would probably be D tier if we had to talk about it. But yeah, thanks for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.